So what is up guys, it is Nisho here, and today I wanted to bring up another topic that I kind of just started thinking about after watching this uh, DP Yu-Gi-Oh video. Um, as you can see, uh, I did just uh, pause and add here. Um, but from his thumbnail, you know, you, you can see this. there's this new Ancient Gear Fusion, and um, in the video he's talking about, uh, you know, obviously the effect and uh, everything about the fusion, and then he brings up this one point where it's like, he thinks that uh, it being able, because it has this effect where if it's uh, if it leaves the field because of the opponent's card effect, um, you special summon ultimate ancient gear golem from your extra deck ignore and summoning condition, which isn't a bad effect. But at the same time, it's very vulnerable to kaijus because kaijus would just uh, tribute over it and then it wouldn't get its effect because it's not an opponent's card effect. It just, um, it just left the field. So it got me thinking because he was, uh, he bring up a point where he's like, uh, Konami is making a lot of cards where they aren't kaiju proof. And I'm thinking to myself, like, should cards really be uh, kaiju proof? Like, should there be any strong card that's kaiju proof? And now I'm talking about the individual card itself. I'm not talking about the deck itself. I'm not saying that the deck wouldn't be able to recover from a kaiju, but should any strong individual card be kaiju proof? And honestly, I don't think they should be because uh, there are some decks where it's like, okay, if you kaiju me, I don't really care because I can either bring the monster back next turn or um, my monster has an effect where it, I, it just floats itself. And so it gets to that point where is that even, is that monster even worth kaijuing? Because, you know, if a monster floats, why would you kaiju it? Um, Especially if the monster doesn't do anything itself. If it's just a floater that, uh, in, in the case of Denglong, right? Um, if I summon out Denglong, I'm using it just as, like, if, if I just summon out Denglong, set my path and pass turn, if you kaiju my Denglong, I'm just replacing it with another Yang Zing monster. You didn't deactivate my uh, nine paths of the Yang Zing. It's, it's still going to be live because I'm still going to have a Yang Zing monster on field after Deng Long gets kaijued, which is pretty broken, <laughs> which is probably why it got banned. Well, not entirely why, but it could be part of the reason why it got banned. So, if you kaiju a Deng Long, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, because I still get a Yang Zing, I still have nine paths uh, live, and, um, you know, it's not really worth kaijuing at that point. Uh, at the same time, something like a Chao Fang, which would be something that you would rather Kaiju because it wouldn't have a floating effect. But it's like the entire deck would still be able to recover because Yang Zings wouldn't put all their resources into one Synchro Summon. Um, you know, they would still have another Yang Zing or two. So Kaijuing that one monster, even though it hinders you, you're probably Kaijuing it because it has an effect where it, it uh, stops your monster effects from activating. So you'd Kaiju it, but it's like the, my deck would still be able to recover. And in the case of things like Zoos and True Dracos, uh, like back when Dryden was around, if you kaiju a, a Dryden, unless you had game, kaijuing a Dryden didn't matter. Kaijuing any one of their Xyz didn't matter unless you could go for game. Because uh, at, like next turn, Zodiacs could just keep on going. They just bring it back. Um, they just, all they need is one monster. And they can go into Laika, they can go to um, Broadbowl, search some more, and then go to Dryden which it was very broken, I'm not saying it wasn't, but it's like it didn't really matter that you kaiju Dryden because like the kaiju itself didn't really do anything um, other than uh, get rid of the monster on board. And But the deck itself and the way it works, um, it was very, it, like it made it very easy to recover from a kaiju. So the last example I wanted to bring up was uh, True Dracos. Well, True Dracos with Masterpiece. Um, Masterpiece was considered one of the most broken monsters of the past format, and since it is still around, it can still be considered one of the most broken monsters, but at the same time, um, it doesn't really have the same amount of searchability. Um, True Dracos aren't as strong as they used to be, so we, we won't know if Masterpiece is as good as it used to be until we get more down the line. But um, with Masterpiece, if you kaiju to Masterpiece, uh, unless they had a true king's return, it was like, okay, well, next turn I could just search another one. You know what I'm saying? It's like, 
Masterpiece itself was only good when it was tribute summoned. So if I have a true King's Return and I bring it back, Masterpiece would be useless. But at the same time, I could just search another Masterpiece next turn. So it wouldn't really, uh, like, unless you had game, again, it wouldn't really matter. And so the point I'm trying to bring here is that, like, sometimes we, like, de monsters don't have to be kaiju-proof. Is that, uh, because there are a lot of deck strategies that can already recover from those kaijus easily. Like, especially with some of the best decks. And um, kaijus don't really do anything, like, don't really do enough harm to your opponent to really warrant them... To, to, to really warrant making monsters kaiju proof in general. So back to Ancient Gears, Ancient Gears is a kind of slower deck, you know, so I can understand where DP Yu-Gi-Oh is coming from saying that, you know, monsters like when the, this fusion itself should be kaiju proof because, you know, Ancient Gears are a deck where you're putting a lot of resources into summoning these fusions. Ancient Gears don't really have a lot of uh, speed or consistency so uh, being able to bring out a fusion that would be able to float once it left the field would be a, a whole lot better. A lot of their fusions, like, well, not a lot, but just Howitzer and um, Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem only activate when they're destroyed. Now, even Howitzer, although it's unaffected by card effects, it still would be very easy to kaiju it. But at the same time, you can just destroy it by battle. And so it just gets to this point where it's like, Ancient Gears are a real slow deck, and because of that, if they get if you kaiju their fusion at the right time, it's going to be real hard for them to recover unless they have something like an overload fusion in their hand, which is very unlikely, because you know like you're relying on one card. It would like unless you know they didn't really put a lot of resources into that one fusion, and like it really it really does depend on the game state. But I do think more often than not, Ancient Gears would lose a lot by getting their monsters kaiju. Um, so I can understand where he's coming from here, but again, like last time, the point I want to make is that monsters don't have to be kaiju proof because, you know, like there are decks that really, you know, like they don't really care if their monster gets kaiju unless you have game. So, because it's, it's not the hardest thing to recover from. Now, obviously I did talk, uh, quite a bit about last format, but you know, this format coming up, we'll just have to see, but I do think it's the same. You know, decks like Pendulum Magician, uh, Invoked, both of those decks can recover easily. Um, Wind Witches and Spellbooks, maybe not. If you hit that one Crystal Wing, I don't know if they'll be able to bring it back. Maybe if they play uh, back to the front, then, but, you know, that's just real situational. Anyway, um, that's really all I have to say for now. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me you guys think in the comments. Uh, do you think kaijus, I mean monsters, moving forward should be more kaiju proof, or do you think a deck should be made in a way where they can cover, they can recover easily from kaijus? Um, that's really all I have to say for now. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is Nisha here. Peace out.